Any discussion about fasting would be incomplete without a discussion about what does and does not break a fast. However, there is no black and white answer to that question, and you should immediately understand why. It's because eating and not eating are not equivalent to fed and fasted. It depends on when you ate, how much you ate, and where you are in your circadian cycle. We can actually arrive at a simple answer to whether or not something breaks the fast or not. Now, the technical way to go about this would be to wear a continuous glucose monitor and to ingest little bits of food of different kinds or large amounts of food of different kinds and measure blood glucose because ultimately blood glucose is the readout of whether or not your system is in a fed or fasted state. There are other parameters too, of course, but that's the dominant one. Insofar as the scientific literature says, drinking water will not break your fast. Drinking tea will not break your fast. Drinking coffee, provided it is black coffee, will not break your fast. Ingesting caffeine in pill form will not break your fast. There are other things that won't break your fast. For instance, eating one peanut when deep in a fasted state will not break your fast. Eating a whole handful of peanuts might not even break your fast if you are in a very low glucose state. However, if you just finished a meal that included carbohydrates or it was a very large meal of any kind an hour ago, yes, indeed, eating one peanut could break your fast. So it's all contextual. That's what's really important to understand. Unless you're going to wear a continuous glucose monitor and set an absolute numerical threshold for what it is to break your fast, I think there are some simple rules that we can follow. First of all, anything that involves sugar, in particular simple sugars, can potentially break your fast. And there's actually a study on this which shows that if people ingest even one gram of sugar post-dinner, if they had a full meal for dinner, that can actually disrupt the expression of some of the circadian genes related to fasting and to sleep and sleep-related fasting. Now, that's pretty extreme. It's almost kind of scary to think about, but that's how sensitive our system is if we already have somewhat elevated blood glucose from a meal that we ate an hour or so ago. Whereas if we have run for an hour or trained hard, high-intensity training, and we haven't quite reached the beginning of our so-called feeding window, will eating a small amount of food take us out of that fast? Well, depends on what the food is. If it's mostly fat, Probably not. A number of people out there nowadays talk about so-called fat fasting. Fat fasting is a way to kind of wriggle past the stringency of either eating or not eating as a black and white rule for feeding window versus non-feeding window. So some people will ingest medium chain triglycerides, so-called MCTs, or people will ingest fats only until their official feeding window begins. So these are sort of how the negotiations that people carry out tend to go. But fat, of course, won't increase blood glucose and insulin as much as carbohydrates will. Protein will have sort of an an intermediate effect. And as I mentioned earlier, ingesting carbohydrates with some fat will tend to blunt the rise in glucose and will extend the duration over which glucose is released. So we really can't say food X or beverage X breaks a fast. However, at the extremes, we can say that. For instance, if you drink a can of soda pop, unless you just ran an ultra marathon, you're breaking your fast. Okay. Eat a piece of pizza, you're breaking your fast. If you eat purely fats, maybe, probably not. If you've been fasting for five hours or more. So you can start to see where there's a lot of wiggle room and it's very contextual. And this is why any post that you see or any information that you see that something does or does not break your fast, that doesn't place it in the context of when the last time you ate and what you ate and your activity and your time within the circadian clock schedule of 24 hours, it's a sort of meaningless discussion. So in general, I think what's really useful if you're not going to wear a continuous glucose monitor is to try and be fairly strict about when you initiate your feeding window and when you stop your feeding window. And as time evolves and you establish a more regular routine of eating certain kinds of foods and not others that are right for you, because as I've emphasized before on this podcast, and I will continue to emphasize, keto works great for some people. Vegetarian keto works great for some people. Carnivore diet works great for other people. Some people are omnivores. Some people are carnivores. Some people are vegan. All of that is great and fine by me. Everyone has to establish what's right for them. Today, we've really bypassed the discussion about foods of a particular origin or type, animal-based or plant-based, but all the same rules apply within this thing that we call intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding. So what breaks a fast will depend. And what you want to eat or what you are willing to eat, that's a totally separate manner from when you eat. But as we've established, when you eat is vitally important.